got one more set of transformations to practice. And in this case, we have a graph of f, but we don't know its function. And we're going to go ahead and draw the transformation that's indicated by each formula. So the first one is g of x equals negative f left parentheses x minus 3 right parentheses. So negative f of, and then all in the parentheses, x minus 3. Before we do the first problem, let me describe what the graph of f of x looks like. f is a parabola that opens down. We have x-intercepts at negative 3 comma 0 and 0 comma 0. The vertex is at negative 1.5 comma maybe about 2.25. And it looks like we've got another nice point at 1 comma negative 4 and negative 4 comma negative 4. That gives you five points to use for your transformations. Okay, that's the same graph we're going to use for the first and second one of these. So g of x is negative f of left parentheses x minus 3 right parentheses. We want to start by looking at stretches, compressions, and reflections. In this case, we do have a reflection. That's the negative on the outside. That's a vertical reflection. So I'm going to take this graph and take every y value and reflect it to be the opposite sign. So those zeros at negative 3, 0, and 0, 0 stay the same, but the vertex of negative 1.5, positive 2.25 becomes negative 1.5, negative 2.25 and the point at 1 comma negative 4 becomes 1 comma positive 4, and the point at negative 4 comma negative 4 becomes negative 4 comma positive 4. This gives me a parabola that opens up its lowest value at negative 1.5, negative 2.25. Now we do the translation, and the translation is replacing x with x minus 3. So that's a movement of 3 to the right. I'm going to pick up each of these points and move it 3 to the right. So 1, 4 becomes 4, 4. 0, 0 becomes 3, 0. Negative 1.5, negative 2.25 becomes 1.5, negative 2.25. Negative 3, 0 becomes 0, 0. And negative 4, 4 becomes negative 1, 4. So there's a parabola opening up with its vertex at 1.5 comma negative 2.25. All right, why don't you try the graph in the second column, the same graph of f of x, and now we want to find g of x equals f of left parentheses negative 2x right parentheses. Pause the video, give it a try. Okay, let's start by determining whether we have any stretches, compressions, or reflections. And on the inside of the function, there was a replacement of x with negative 2x. That's actually a horizontal reflection and a horizontal compression by a factor of 2. Which one do we do first? It actually doesn't matter. I'm going to do the compression first because those are the harder ones and I know my points very clearly right now. So I'm going to take every x value and multiply it by a half. Here we go. We have a point at negative 4, negative 4. When I compress that, it's going to be at negative 2, negative 4. I'm multiplying the x value by 1 half. I had a point at negative 3, 0. When I compress that, it's going to be at negative 1.5, 0. I had a point at negative 1.5, positive 2.25. And when I compress that, it's going to be at negative 0.75, positive 2.25. I'm going to write that one down because that one's a little tricky. Negative 0.75, 2.25. 0 comma 0, multiplying the x value by 0 is still the same. And finally 1 comma negative 4 is going to be at 1 half comma negative 4 when I'm done. So my parabola has been compressed horizontally. Now I'm going to reflect that over the y-axis. So I'm going to take every x value and make it the opposite x value. For example, 1 half comma negative 4 becomes negative 1 half comma negative 4. 0, 0 stays 0, 0. Negative 0 0.75, 2.25 becomes positive 0 0.75, 2.25. Negative 1.5 comma 0 becomes positive 1.5 comma 0. 
and negative 2 comma negative 4 becomes positive 2 comma negative 4. So there's our new graph. Has a lot of work, huh? All right, a new set of graphs. Our new F graph is a semicircle above the X axis. It has points on it of negative 3 comma 0, 0 comma 3, and 3 comma 0. So again, a semicircle, a half circle. We want to graph g of x equals 1.5 f of x and then minus 1 outside that f of x. We need to start with stretches, compressions, and reflections. The only one we've got here is the multiplication by 1.5. So 1.5 times f of x is on the outside. It's going to be a vertical stretch to the graph. I'm going to take every y value and multiply it by 1.5. So 0, 0 stays 0, 0, because 0 times 1.5 is still 0. 0, 3, we multiply the y value by 1.5. That's going to become 0, 4.5. And then 3, 0, multiplying 0 by 1.5 still is 0, so still 3, 0. So now we have a semicircle that's just a little bit stretched. It's a little bit more ovular now. Not quite a perfect semicircle anymore. Now that we're done with that, our next thing is going to be to do the addition subtraction part. That's subtracting one. So we'll take each of those values and move the graph down one unit. So negative three, zero becomes negative three, negative one. Zero comma 4.5 becomes zero comma 3.5. And three comma zero becomes three comma negative one. And now we have a nice stretchy half circle-ish shape. The next one is for you to try the same semicircle for f, but you want to find g of x equals f of left parentheses x minus 1 right parentheses minus 4. Pause the video, give it a try. Okay, we're back. First we look for stretches, compressions, reflections, and in this case we have none. We're doing a horizontal translation of 1 to the right and a vertical translation of 4 down. We can do those in either order. I'm just going to start with the horizontal one. So, and actually, maybe I'll just do them both at once. I just have to remember that I'm doing 1 right, 4 down. Remember, as we do these translations, it doesn't matter what order we can do them. We can actually do them at the same time. So I'll pick up every point and move it 1 right, 4 down. First point is at negative 3 comma 0, moving it 1 right, and 4 down puts it at negative 2, negative 4. 0 comma 3, move it 1 right and 4 down, that puts it at 1 comma negative 1. 3 comma 0, move it 1 right and 4 down, that puts it at 4 comma negative 4. So I have a half circle going through those three points the top half of a half circle, but now it's below the x-axis. All right, final set. The graph of f now looks like a square root function graph. It has an end point at 1 comma 0, and it goes through points 2 comma 1 and 5 comma 2. So we can move around those three points. We want to find g of x equals f of left parentheses, negative x minus 1 right parentheses. First question we ask, any stretches, compressions, or reflections? And in this case, we do have a negative sitting there in front of the x. And since it's inside of the f of x, we've got to think about factoring it out, right? So this is really g of x equals f left parentheses, negative left parentheses. And when I take the negative out of negative x minus 1, I'm going to get positive x plus 1. And then right parentheses, right parentheses. So the two things I need to do are the horizontal reflection, and then that's going to be followed by replacing x with x plus 1, which is going to be a movement of 1 to the left. All right, first that horizontal reflection, we take every x value and make it the opposite x value. So 1 comma 0 becomes negative 1 comma 0. 2 comma 1 becomes negative 2 comma 1, and 5 comma 2 becomes negative 5 comma 2. There's our horizontal reflection. Now we move this graph 1 to the left. 
So negative one zero becomes negative two zero, negative two one becomes negative three one, and negative five two becomes negative six two. So there we have the new function. Last one's for you to try. Same f, it's that square root graph. And g of x equals negative f of left parentheses, negative x, right parentheses. Pause the video, give that one a try. Okay, we're back. Hopefully you recognize that you've got a vertical reflection and a horizontal reflection here. And it doesn't matter which order you do them in, but I would probably do them one at a time just to be safe. So I'm going to start by doing the vertical reflection. So that's going to take 1 comma 0 and reflect the y values. So that's the same, still 1 comma 0. 2 comma 1 reflected is going to be 2 comma negative 1. And 5 comma 2 reflected vertically is going to be 5 comma negative 2. So there's the vertical reflection. Now I'm going to do the horizontal reflection. So I'll take every x value and negate it. So 1 comma 0 becomes negative 1 comma 0. 2 comma negative 1 becomes negative 2 comma negative 1. And 5 comma negative 2 becomes negative 5 comma negative 2. And we have the final function there. To recap, the most important thing you do is first look for stretches compressions and reflections, both in the x direction and the y direction. Those have to happen first, but the order of them does not matter. After you've done those transformations, you can do the vertical and horizontal translations up, down, left, or right.